Hey guys, hope you're doing well. So today we're going to be looking at yet another state management tool within React. It seems to be heaps of them coming out. Um, but this one, Zustand, is is very nice. I think I've been using it recently and it's been um, super simple, uh, very lightweight, unopinionated. So I thought it'd be worth doing a quick tutorial on how this works. Um, so I'll do, in this video, I'll do a quick tutorial on how it works. I'm going to do a second video comparing it to uh, Redux, Recall, the other state management tools and see um, how it compares in terms of syntax, performance, etc. Uh, and yeah, if you like these type of videos, please consider subscribing and let's get right into it. So this is Zustand, like I said, state management tool. Um, it's kind of a hooks based uh, store. So it's similar to, more similar to Redux in terms of the, the store and it keeps the state outside of the React tree than, um, than Recoil. Yeah, I think we should just uh, dive in and start using it. So if you're not familiar what the issue is generally in terms of state management, I'd recommend um, checking out my Recoil tutorial video. Just the first couple of minutes or so, I'll link it somewhere on the screen. Um, in that video, we go into just what the general problem is with state management and why all these state management tools are coming out to try uh, to try solve. And um, this is exactly the same app as I use in that tutorial as well. So this should be quite familiar. Um, there's a few hard coded values here. So what we're going to do is we're going to update those uh, values to use the um, to use Zustand, and we'll see how it looks. So yeah, let's get right into it. Um, what we have in this application. So I've just created a, a new create React app. Um, added a bit of CSS to, to make it look all right and then just removed everything from the app.js file and replaced it with what we have here. So we just got um, an app component which renders an app and a body. The nav component right now has just got an empty username uh, which if I type in you'll see it. Um, refresh this guy. Oops. If I type in there we go. Um, you're going to see at the top right here. Um, so we're going to replace that with hopefully that's going to keep track of the, the profile username. Um, yeah, we've got the body which shows the profile and the count. So that's the two sections in the middle. The profile has just got a local state variable, which is the name to so use state. And this is just got, yeah, it's just showing it and it's got the input to change it. So as I type in here, it's going to update the, the username. And finally, we have this uh, count component, which is at the bottom which is going to hopefully show the number of characters in the username. Uh, right now it's hard-coded to zero. And of course this split of components here is to kind of show where that issue is. We've obviously got this um, username in local state, so it's not really accessible by any other components. And that's what we're trying to solve here. Cool, so first thing we do is um, just go to your terminal and just hit npm install um, sustand, I think it is. Um, so I've already got this, so I'm just gonna cancel out that. And yeah, we'll get started. So in Zustand, the first thing you do is you create a store and that store is going to return uh, a hook which you can use. So you can create many stores. Um, in this case, we're just going to create the one for, for this app and we're just going to call it use store and we're going to go for the create function. Um, yeah, Zustand. And this just takes in a callback and we can see that there's a few arguments. Um, set, get are the ones that we're going to be using today. Um, but we're not going to need them just yet. So I'm just going to continue to create this store. So this is just a, a function that returns an object. So it just returns an object and that object is your store. So this syntax should be hopefully quite familiar. And I guess the first thing we'll do is we'll just add our username to the store and we'll also add a function to update that username. So just add the username and we'll just do red. So that's the, the default there. And the second thing we'll do is a function to set username. So let's just call it set username. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the set function here, which allows us to set state. Um, and it's, it's worth noting that this function here merges state as well. So we don't need to kind of um, get all the existing state and try uh, spread it in. It's just going to do all that for us. So what we can do here is just create a function which takes in a username, which is the username that we want to update with. And we just call the set function and we just pass in um, an object in this case, which is passing an object with um, username in it. And like I said, this is going to merge state. So in this case, it's not merging anything because we don't have any other state. But if you think about it in a larger application, um, you know, where you'd usually kind of spread kind of all your other state, etc. This is all going to do that for you. So that's fine like that. Um, and yeah, that's it. Now we just use the store as we would, or use the uh, hook as you would um, the standard state. So I'm going to go down to the profile function. Um, 
and I'm going to hit use store and it takes in no variable so when you use the hook with uh, no arguments it's just going to return the entire store uh, we don't always want to do that of course and I'll show you how to um, select specific pieces of state within the store in, in the in the nav bar but if we just replace that with use store and then we can destructure the username and set username and I save it and you can see nothing's changed but it's just all all working as you'd expect and the biggest difference is now instead of using local state we have this store sitting above all the components which we can use um, so yeah so let's see how we can replace the nav bar and we're just going to take this use store and we're going to place it here and of course like i said we could just destructure this uh, save that that's all going to work fine um, but typically you don't want to take the entire store so what you can do is this basically passes in or takes in a kind of a selector function so it gives you access to the state uh, and then from there you can then just select exactly what you want so um, this returns just that piece of state and you can return it however you want so this is kind of similar to I mean if, if you know basically the selector pattern or if you're familiar with um, Redux's kind of map states to props which is exactly the same so map state to I guess nav um, if I did this it's exactly the well, actually map state to a username or something um, and then you can just pass this in exactly the same and now all works fine um, there's actually also a performance benefit to, to having the selector outside of the, the render function like this um, but we'll look into that in the, in the next video so I'll just uh, keep it simple um, just now and yeah the final thing is the uh, the count so this is kind of here to show an example of derived data so you can always of course derive the data within the component itself so I can just um, you know I can do just do the use store get the username and then just do the like length um, which is going to work fine but of course sometimes you want derived data that can be shared across um, different components and the way that works is we're just going to go up to our store we're just going to add uh, another piece of the state or piece of the store and that's just going to be another function and um, takes in no arguments and it's just going to return the length for us here and we can access the store using the um, uh, the get function here in the state so we're just going to call get and then we're just going to take username length there we go obviously this is a simple example but you can see how this could be quite useful for other pieces of derived state and this obviously reacts um, to any changes and yeah one thing I probably forgot to mention is yeah the use store does subscribe to the to the store so obviously it changes anytime um, a piece of state changes so I'm going to take this um, account here I'm going to go again we're going to use use store and we're just going to do a selector to extract out the count function so state dot count and I'm going to just save that and yeah that's it um, so now as I type it's gonna kind of keep in sync and um, and that's how simple it is it's a kind of a very very comfy API as they say in the documentation it's hoops based um, you, you'll notice that we didn't you know, wrap anything in any providers etc it's all stored outside of the, the component tree hence why it's similar to, to redux instead of something like um, recoil um, and yeah there's probably a couple of things else I want to mention if I just go back to the uh, github page here um, things worth knowing so there because it's all hooks it's, it's kind of very very flexible um, async actions you can have a have a look at in the documentation probably a couple of things of noting is the middleware so again uh, because it's a hook you can just um, essentially add a, a, a proxy function so you can override the existing functions um, the proxy and just wrap wrap it around that function so you can see in in this case here um, they've just created a function which takes in the exact same API and what it does is just overrides the, the set function um, but it just does a you know console log before and after and then it just returns everything so then when you wrap your store around that function I'm just going to log everything um, you can do the exact same with Immer um, you're wrapping the, the produce function from Immer so when you update your state you can kind of update it in a, in a mutable fashion um, and keep it immutable so middleware can I think can get quite powerful and yeah because again hooks and the flexibility of it all and um, if you are familiar or you enjoy using the redux kind of reducer pattern um, it's all available to you here and you can also even use uh, redux dev tools with it if you like and um, yeah I think that's it for this video hopefully 
kind of short and sweet and um, so it stands quite nice and a minimal simple tool uh, i've been using it past just the last couple of weeks and it's yeah it's, it's, it's really nice and yeah that's everything for me i hope you enjoyed this video and have a good day